America's armed forces began strikes against ISIL targets in Syria. I also made clear that America would act as part of a broad coalition, and that's exactly what we've done. We were joined in this action by our friends and partners, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Jordan, Bahrain, and Qatar. And more broadly, over 40 nations have offered to help uh, in this comprehensive effort to confront this terrorist threat, to take out terrorist targets, to train and equip Iraqi and Syrian opposition fighters uh, who are going up against ISIL on the ground, to cut off ISIL's financing, to counter its hateful ideology, and to stop the flow of fighters into and out of the region. Hi, right, folks. We welcome you back. Uh, joining us now to talk about uh, the uh, economic impact of what you uh, just heard and what's uh, happening now is Peter Morisi, economist, professor at the University of Maryland, Newsmax contributor. Hello, Peter. Good afternoon. Good to talk to you again, sir. Uh, all right, let me, let me ask you, um, you know, anytime uh, the U.S., I mean, we're at war. Uh, we launched a, a war uh, in earnest uh, yesterday, uh, we, or we expanded a war that had already started. Um, how might we expect this will affect our, our pocketbooks one way or another here in the U.S.? Well, in the short term, there won't be a big impact on the global economy. ISIS doesn't control a lot of oil. It has access to some, and the trick will be to cut off its revenues from that oil. The way you do it is by cutting off its access to the banking payment system. The oil gets out, but the money doesn't get back. Uh, from the U.S. point of view, it would be a little bit of a boost to the arms industry. You know, people like Rockwell and Boeing will be selling more stuff. And so that's a boost to them. Uh, but overall, this is a skirmish in the grand scheme of things. Uh, we're not sending ground troops. And the amount of armaments that we're using really is a, a footnote compared to our overall defense spending. This is, as NPR of all people called it, war on the cheap. War on the cheap, okay, uh, literally and figuratively, perhaps, uh, without the ground troops. Um, let, let me ask you this. Uh, the news uh, that uh, we uh, attacked the al-Qaeda offshoot known as uh, Khorasan, in addition to striking ISIS targets uh, because of the fact that uh, we viewed Khorasan as an imminent threat to the security of uh, the United States, where we've been informed they're the ones making bombs that could be placed in laptops, uh, undetectable bombs that could get on airlines. Uh, first question is, um, what does this do? Does this rattle the, the airline stocks? Does this rattle the, the consumer of, uh, and the purchaser of airline tickets? Does this change people's plans at this point? No, because we've known about this threat, and the fact that we're actually striking at it reduces it uh, if the president is successful. I don't believe that that has an appreciable effect. Also, Americans have become hardened to the notion, much as the Brits were during World War II, that this threat exists, and we simply cannot let it interrupt our everyday lives. Certainly, if there's a bomb threat that 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, we have to empty the place, or if there's a bomb threat at my home, we have to empty the place. But we can't go about our business as if uh, we're afraid there's a bomb under every seat. No, absolutely, and I understand that, and that's a, that's a very good point. And my next question, of course, uh, was going to be, you know, God forbid, you know, there were some who were saying uh, uh, way, way on the left that this uh, just provokes uh, ISIS, that this puts us at, more at risk. And we know that according to many politicians, many observers, there are ISIS people, so to speak, in this country already, uh, that these uh, intensified airstrikes uh, in Syria against ISIS may just prompt them to do something here uh, in the United States. We know about the Australian plot that was uncovered and prevented, thank God, where they were going to kidnap people and just behead them in public. Um, if, God forbid, there's a terrorist attack by ISIS of, of, you know, when I say major proportion, I'm talking about 9-11. But I mean, when I say smaller, uh, believe me, I'm not minimizing what it would mean. Uh, in any sense, but even if they took one person, you know, in, in the middle of the street and beheaded them and claimed responsibility uh, anywhere in this country, what would that mean, do you think? I don't think it would mean a lot. The people on the left, on the extreme left, you know, are always basically saying the way to get along with Mr. Putin or the way to get along with the Muslims. Do you remember Mr. Kerry campaigning for president? What a reformation he's gone through, telling <laughs> us how we can't possibly kill every terrorist. If we do not strike 
where threats are known and we can achieve results, then we are foolishly engaging in appeasement. We're becoming, you know what those people are? They are an army of descendants of Neville Chamberlain. Appeasement doesn't work. In the face of a threat, only strength is the answer. Let me ask you one, one general question with regard to the markets uh, overall. Um, it seems like nothing has really rattled the market uh, uh, since its run-up. I mean, you know, the bubble, are we at a bubble, we're not at a bubble, et cetera, but uh, it, it just seems like it keeps persevering. Well, because the fundamentals underneath the market are very sound, although the U.S. economy has hardly grown rapidly, it has grown, and American companies are in a good deal of their profits abroad. The S&P 500, probably about half, and that's 80% of the publicly traded companies in America and all the big ones. So we're making money, uh, and the question is always, where do we make it? We can't make a lot of money in the United States, well, but for cutting costs. Well, I want to ask you that real quick, Peter. Doing it. Peter, I want to ask you, we got 30 seconds. This inversion uh, executive order by the president that uh, is coming down and, and the action he's taking, well, how's that going to affect uh, uh, the economics here? Depends on which tax lawyers you listen to. Uh, right now, some of them are saying that this can be worked around and it won't have much of an effect. Right now, inversions are not having a huge effect on the U.S. economy, but they're a wake-up call. We better reform our corporate taxes or our declining competitiveness will come back to haunt us. All right, Peter, great talking to you, sir. Thank you very much. Peter Morisi, economist and professor at the University of Maryland here on the Steve Malzberg Show. When we come back, former Republican House Majority Leader, the hammer. We're going to put the hammer down with Tom DeLay right here on the Steve Malzberg Show, Newsmax Television.